Okay, hello everyone. So the guidelines of this session are, please stay muted and turn your video off. You can ask any questions you have in the chat box and please use respectful language in the chat box, yeah? Okay then, my name is Aishwarya. I'm your host for today's session. This sharing session is brought to you by RICE, which is a program that equips young people with entrepreneurial skills and knowledge to start small businesses. RICE is supported by City Foundation. And welcome to Talkie Talks, everyone. So this is a series of sharing sessions where we talk about, we talk with entrepreneurs who have very small businesses, but mighty owners, and they share about their motivation to start their own businesses and the story behind their journey. RICE aims to showcase stories of small local businesses that are persevering and chasing their dreams through Talkie Talks. And so I'm happy to welcome our guest for the day. We have Xiu Ying from Agaga Yona. So big round of applause for you, Xiu Ying. Thank you so much Hi, for thanks. joining us today. Thanks for having me. And so happy to have you. So before we start, just the agenda for today's session. Yeah. So I'll be welcoming you, of course, and then I'll be introducing you yourself, Xiu Ying, and um, you're from Agaga Yona. And this show is where we'll be learning about the reason why you started, the story behind Agaga Nyonya, and the experience building it. We also will be having a Q&A session where I'll be asking you um, the audience's questions, which will be in the chat box. So um, I would urge the audience to feel free to type in your questions in the chat during the session. And so the be ending is... <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely tell you the questions I have. I'll read it all for you. <laughs> so in the ending, um, we'll be having the next Talkie Talk session and we'll be sharing a little bit about Rice Online, which is an online beginners course about entrepreneurship. So without further ado, let's, uh, can you briefly tell us about your business? Just a one minute quick explanation about the general business. Yeah, sure. Um, well, we are Aga Aga Nonya, a small time Nonya Peranakan instant food paste manufacturer based out of our own home kitchen in Subang Jaya. We started officially in December last year with the intention of selling only about three to four type of paste, um, food paste. And now we have grown our line of products to about eight different types of paste and a flour mix, which are but the paste are all my favorite Pranakan dishes that I grew up with um, since I was young. Um, all the paste are my mom's and my grandma's recipes. Um, the, ones, the, the products that we have are pongte, chili garam, sambal sate, which is in sate sauce, but it's a candle nut sambal. And um, sorry about that, just the phone is ringing. Um, Nonya ayam rumpa marinade. Garang Asam, which is also Asam Pedas, uh, Sambal Tumis, Sambal Belacan, and our best seller, Masak Lemak Nanas. Uh, so that's about eight, eight to nine paste. Um, we first started selling the paste direct to customers. Um, and right now, we are also doing B2B. We are supplying to cafes, um, to restaurants. Uh, we are working with um, the raw supplier ingredients as well to collaborate with them. So yeah, that's just a brief of it. Okay, uh, so can you tell me what inspired you to start your own business? Uh, it's actually a very long story, but I'm going to try to summarize it. Okay. Uh, it. It all started when I was really, really young, when I was back in kindergarten. I think about age of four, um, I was sharpening my color pencil. And then I realized if I were to rotate the color pencil really slowly, it would form a very nice, long, swirly pencil shaving. And for a four-year-old, I thought it looked really pretty. So, so I sharpened him my colored pencils with really puny short, and then I really have the, I would have a, the long pencil shavings, really nice ones. And then I would go to school, to, to, to my kindergarten, and try to sell that to my friends. And I managed to sell one for 20 cents. You know, at the age of four, right, 20 cents is a lot of money. And then that's when I got the sense of like, wow, I can, 
I can sell rubbish to people <laughs> at, the, at the time, at the time. And then I went to primary school. Um, it, in primary school, I found a shop that sells pocket size laminated photos, uh, like this, this small, of, of celebrities. And I started selling that in school as well. Um, I would have an album with little pockets in it um, that would hold all my stock. And I always have extra stocks of um, famous bands, singers, artists, um, depending on the current trend at that time. And I would sell them to, to, to my friends. Um, and I price it according to the size. And um, that's how I got all my allowances, extra allowances that my mom did not know of. Um, then I went to secondary school. And at that time, um, I was already learning how to play the, the electric organ. And I told myself that I'm going to learn to the highest grade that will qualify me to be a music teacher. And I'm going to make a business out of it, um, which I did. At the age of 14, I had a few students learning under me, um, teaching them music. I was a qualified teacher te teaching them music and even sending them for exams. And they actually passed the exams. So, so since at the age of four till then, I had a sense of... Uh, uh, there's a sense of satisfaction of earning my own, you know, my own hard-earned money. Uh, so that's, that, that, that was what got me inspired to eventually start my own business because like from young, I've always known that, okay, this is what I want to do. Um, so from that pencil shaving till today, <laughs> I, got, I got no near foot case. Um, so, that, right, uh, so yeah, that's how I got inspired. Being able to earn my own money when I was young. I think that's it's very interesting that you started your business at such, such a young age as well. Um, but what made you um, jump into like um, Aga Kaja Nyonya Paste? What made you me jump to, to start this food paste? Uh, well, I grew up eating Pranakan food. Because I'm, myself a, I'm a Pranakan myself. Um, we are a Pranakan household here. And I grew up eating the food. Um, and I really, really liked the food. And Every Chinese New Year, my mom will, will make her, her, her dishes and we will call friends over um, and family over to, to, to eat. And, and every single time, everyone would be praising her, her food. Like they would rave about it. They would tell her to sell her food if, if it's possible and whatnot. And, and there is no one negative comment coming up from them. I don't know whether it's a biased point of view or what. I really don't know, but um, her food is good. And I've always thought that, hey, um, there's no good nonya food out there, but at home, I get my mom's good Peranakan food. Why not monetize it? Right? Um, so that's how it all started. I, I had this plan of, um, of, of trying to, to, to introduce good Peranakan food to people out there. Um, yeah, so that's how it all started, I guess. And yeah, Pranakan food is, is, is quite, it's quite hard to find good Pranakan food out there. Good restaurants uh, and, and affordable as well. Pranakan food outside is really expensive. What were the challenges you faced when you first started and how did you overcome these challenges? Oh, um, I had no prior experience in food manufacturing business. Um, I'm an engineer. Uh, by education and background and going to food manufacturing business is a whole new thing for me right so I got into this with no knowledge at all on on packaging on shelf life processes um, the right equipment to use and whatnot um, it was a lot of trial and error so, so the main challenge is going in without any prior knowledge um, so it was a lot of trial and error for me I'd spend a long time on something only to find that I'm doing it wrong. Then I had to go back to square one. But I learned a lot along the way. So it, it was a matter of figuring out as I go and really just not giving up. And um, Mr. G, <laughs> Google, uh, was a big help. Um, thank God for technology and all. I, I would find other pace manufacturers, be it small timers or retail, the retail ones or people who are already in the food business um, in, in any way, I would send them emails, messages, constantly bugging them with, with, with calls, 
asking them a lot of questions. And I do get, um, most of the time I would get rejections. Like they would just ignore my calls, my messages, my emails and whatnot. But those who actually respond, who, who responded, were, were a big help. Um, so one thing I've learned is you cannot be shy when you are running your own business, especially when you're starting out. Um, you need to ask if you do not know. You need to be bold and you need to have super thick skin. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I overcame that because I have thick skin. <laughs> you face um, any challenges with um, constructing the ingredients and perfecting the recipes for your sauces? Oh, yeah. Um, that's how Aga Aga, the name Aga Aga came about actually. Um, so my family never had like a one set recipe, but it always tasted good. So um, I spent a good, good couple of months just sitting down watching my mom cook, writing every single ingredient that she used. And, and mind you, Pranathan food, the way they cook is, um, it's a lot, just aga aga here and there, just a pinch of this, uh, just use this Nescafe cup of, of santan, uh, just measure with your finger, measure with your thumb. It's, it's, it's very difficult. So I would have, I sat down and literally just write, wrote every, every ingredients that they use. I would measure it, I would weigh it. Um, yeah, so then, then I, would, I would send it out to test it, uh, to make sure that the taste is right. I would get a feedback and then I would redo it again, and fix whatever that needs to be fixed um, to, to what I have now. So it was, a, it was a very interesting journey just to get the right precise um, um, recipe for it. Okay, so there is actual uh, measurement for no, your... No. Oh, no, that is very good to hear. So um, the next question is, so what were the challenges that your business faced during MCO and how did you adapt to these new challenges? Huh. Um, I had a lot of issues getting the, the raw ingredients because of the travel restrictions they had, right? They, we weren't allowed to, to, to drive in here and there. Um, and I couldn't go to the market and things like that. So I had to find suppliers um, and different ways to source ingredients online. Or I would call them, or um, sometimes um, if, if my mom is out with permission, with a permit, then I would, get her to get um, the ingredients for me. So the, the, the toughest was just getting the raw ingredients and, and things were really expensive at the time um, because it's so scarce, right? So you just have to adapt to it. Just trying to find ways to get the ingredients. That, that, that was the main challenge. But what about your challenges in getting the paste to the customers during MCO that time? Were there any problems there? No, I had no problems there because thank goodness for the riders. Um, I was using a lot of Grab and Lala Move. Um, yeah, without them, I wouldn't be able to, to deliver the pace out, but thank goodness for them. So I was engaging um, them quite a bit just to deliver the pace. Ah, and what about your sales during MCO? Was it any, in any way affected? No, actually it was, it was really good. <laughs> Because everyone was at home, right? They're stuck at home. Uh, they have nowhere else to go um, other than, I mean, there's nothing else to do other than cook. So a lot of them were cooking. So they were, uh, sales were really good during MCO. For, I think for food business, it was, it, it was really good. That is quite interesting to hear because a lot of businesses were affected during that time. Yeah. So um, yeah. what did you manage to learn about business ever since starting since the beginning? Uh, well, one thing that I've learned is you need to, you need to be bold. You need to be brave and you need to take risks. You, I mean, you need to be bold to take risks, but it needs, it needs to be calculated risks. Just, don't just jump into it without, without calculating the risk. Um, you need to try, you need to learn how to forecast, um, um, what is what is expected or what's going to happen, um, whether is it worth doing it 
or else you're just going to be wasting a lot of money and wasting a lot of your time um, jumping into it, right? But the main thing is you you really need to be brave and and never just don't give up. It's it's going to be a very lonely journey. Um, you will also need this, as much support as you can get from your friends and family. Very important because there'll be times where there'll be times where you will feel really down when you don't see the money coming in or you spend so much and and you're just in the rate. Right. Um, sometimes you don't even have enough money to 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 fill up your petrol tank. You will need support from them, um, be it be it emotional support or or you know just just a nice word of of motivation. That that just helps a lot. That that will help a lot. It's going to be a lonely journey, um, and it's not something everyone can do. And if you actually do embark onto it you are one step ahead of everyone. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. So um, can I ask you, what is your motivation for doing this business? Uh, my motivation for doing this business, oh, that's, a very, that's a very big question. <laughs> uh, I have to say that what, what, what keeps me going um, would be knowing that I've always wanted to, to start something of my own that I can probably call mine. Um, and like I said, like since young, when I, at age of four, I've, I've, I sold pencil shavings to people. And, and it's just a passion that I have. You know, um, especially for Pranakan food. Pranakan food, I'm, I'm very proud to be, to be a Pranakan, you know. And, and it's so unfortunate that young people these days, we don't, the, the culture is basically dying among the young people. Um, and I really want to use this, this channel uh, to actually educate the young people what Pranakan culture is all about. True food. Yeah. Okay, so just throwing this random question out here. Uh, what is your favorite Pranakan dish and what is the essence, the main deep essence of Pranakan cooking? My favorite Pranakan dish would be um the would be the chili garam. Uh so chili garam is is this it's, it's this paste, it's, it's like sambal, but you don't have, it's, it's just very savory. Um, at the same time, there's a nice hint of spiciness to it. So it's not too spicy. It's just, it's just right. And you can usually cook it with, you usually cook it with seafood, um, but you'd be surprised you can actually do a lot of things with chili garam. And my mom has always been cooking that um, ever since I was young and I grew up with it. So that's, that's like my the favorite one. Uh, what, what was the other, the, the follow-up question, sorry? What is the essence of Pranakan dish for you personally? Uh, the essence of it would be complexity. Uh, you, Pranakan food in general is, or any dishes for that matter, Pranakan dishes, it's, it's a, it's very tedious and very complex to make. And um, I think that's, that's the essence of it. You, it's because of the complexity, um, not just the wide variety of ingredients are used to make that one dish, but the, the technique that's being used, um, um, all sorts of, of, of flavors of, of ingredients here and there being put into that one simple dish. Well, not that simple, one complex dish that makes that makes your test, yeah, that just think, uh, tickles your taste buds, you know. So that's what Pranakan is all about. That's the essence of it. Complexity of cooking. Okay, so the last question we have is, do you think young people should start their own business? And why, why do you say your answer, yes or no? <laughs> um, that question, well... 
I have to say that it, it is, it's subjective. Uh, it really depends on, on your current situation, um, where you are at that point of time. Uh, it's, yeah, neither yes, neither no. Uh, it's, it's subjective. If you have the means, go for it. If you have the luxury to do it, yes, you should do it. If, if you have, if you have the, uh, a really great idea that's boiling your, behind you and, and you know there, and you've done your research well enough, yes, do it. But don't jump into business just for the sake of doing business because then, then it's a long journey. Yeah? It's a long, tough journey. Um, don't do it for the sake of doing it. Okay, um, so we have some audience's questions here. So oh. the first one is, <laughs> yeah. questions. Okay. <laughs> um, so what are your future plans for Aga Agat Nunya? Um, the future plans for Aga Agat Nunya is, um, I, want, I would like to take it into retail and eventually global distribution. That, that was actually my main goal, global distribution. Um, and at the same time, I would also like to see Aga Aga Nunya having uh, food kiosks. So it won't just be food paste anymore. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a food kiosk selling um, rice bowls. So it's gonna be really, it's, it's like fast food, um, but in rice bowl form. Um, but the main thing would be having, um, the main goal, the end goal is to take this into glo uh, global distribution. That's a future wow. plan. Oh, wow. Those are mighty dreams. Very, very inspiring to hear. And the next question <laughs> is, um, how are you reaching out to your customers? As in, what is your marketing strategy? So right now, um, I started out with a lot of word of mouth. Um, and I'm, right now, I'm doing a, the, the brand awareness through the online platforms. Uh, social, mainly social media, a lot of social media uh, uh, push. Um, eventually, I'm going to start buying on ads. So the first thing first, I need to build my social media presence before I can start buying ads for it. So that, that's, that's like, it, it's a step, step by step thing. Uh, but right now, right now, it's mainly on social media. Okay, okay. Um, so another question we have is, what is the Peranakan food industry like in Malaysia? Are there a lot of competitions? Well, um, are we talking about retails or, or more of like a home-based pacemaker? Um, a Peranakan paste in terms of both home-based and retails? There are, so in, on, in the retail side, um, on the retail side, there are not that many Peranakan food paste. And even if there are, um, there are very few choices that, that you can get. Um, and home base, not that many as well. So I, I was doing my research before I decided to, to do this, this business, um, just to research the, 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 what's the market competition like and things like that. And you'd be surprised that, I, that there are not that many people doing Peranakan food paste. Pr Peranakan food paste. Food paste, yes. You get a lot of sambals and things like that. Uh, but not traditional Peranakan food. But they are slowly emerging. So um, there, are one or th there are two or three, a few, but not many. I, I, I could count like with, 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 with my 10 fingers. There are not that many at all. Um, in, in your opinion, why do you think uh, there is not a lot, there is a very limited selection of Pranakan paste, as you mentioned just now? Uh, I think because, well, um, wait, hang on. So back in Malacca, in Malacca, you do have a few, but they're all mainly based in Malacca, right? Uh, but over here in, in KL, uh, it's still scarce, and why? That's a good question. 
Um, I think it's because people in general are not very um, familiar with what Pranakan food is all about. So, so that's why um, it's not there yet. So my job is to, or what I want to do is to educate people what Pranakan food is all about. Yeah. Okay. That's a good um, question. <laughs> uh, I'll, I will inform that to the person who asked that in the chat box. So final question that we have here is, um, what are the two top skills or mindsets that an entrepreneur needs to run a successful business? Mindset? Um, well, you need to have a mindset of not being afraid to fail. Um, you are bound to fail, but there are so many possibilities of failing, right? But if you do fail, you need to see the silver lining to that. Um, there's, always, there's always a lesson to learn from it. And seriously, every time you fail, you will learn. It's, it's a hard way to learn, but you will learn. And you pick yourself back up and continue on. Um, and don't give up. You need to have the mindset of not, being, not giving up. You're going to have a lot of um, setbacks, a lot of setbacks. Um, there'll be one problem after another. But that's, that's, that's what makes the journey very interesting and very fun to, to, to be on. Um, you're going to hear a lot of... Uh, a lot of noises, yeah, t people telling you that you can't do this or you can't do that. Um, um, or, or at times where, where you just, for that particular month, you don't, you don't have enough money to, 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 to pull it through, but just believe in yourself. Um, believe in yourself that things will just fall into place for you. It's, you Somehow, things will just fall into place. Trust me. If it's for you, it's for you. But just don't give up. Persevere. Oh, that, that's very powerful. Um, can I get another one? Mindset or skill, perhaps? <laughs> um, you need to have at least a bit of um, financial background. Uh, there's a lot of math involved. Um, so you... I, I don't... I wouldn't say that you need to be very well versed at it, but you need to know how to be able to do your forecasting. You need to know whether is it uh, worth investing into certain things. Um, so a bit of financial background would help. So go, go and, go and Mr. G is there. Mr. G is always there. Google it. Um, how, what's profit, what's revenue, uh, how do I do forecasting for this, how do I do forecasting for that, it, it really helps. Or else you're just going to go into it blindly. So everything you do needs to be calculated. You, although you have the basic knowledge, it's, it's good enough, but you know, you still need that. Okay, thank you so much Ying, for your very amazing insights. It was very inspiring as well as very powerful to hear you speak. So yeah, that was uh, showing everybody from Aga Gat Nunya sharing about her experience as in Tauke Talks today brought to you by RISE and supported by City Foundation. What really thanks, thanks, Maria. Oh, thank you so much. It was great having you here. So we also um, at RISE, if your goal is to start a small business or learn more about business, um, RISE is a, organizing a free online course, RISE Online, as you can see, a free beginner's course about business building. You can also win up to 10,000 seed funding. So you can sign up or learn more at RISE, um, Bitly RISE Online. And please don't forget to sign up for our next Talky Talks We'll be having um, admin from Small Potato. It will be on the 23rd of September, 3 p.m. To learn more about entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship, 
stay tuned about other, uh, our other programs and please like and follow us across our social media platforms as well. So see you later, Xu Ying. Uh, Xu Ying. It was really great, really such an honor having you listening to you speak. Thanks for having me Open here. Your business as well. I hope Thank great you. successes in your future. Take care. Have a nice Thank day. Thank you. You too. Bye.